first. Sponsored by Natex Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Take a look at temperatures on this Monday evening. Actually, pretty nice. Uh, 50 degrees still down in Effingham. 47 in Springfield. 44 in Champaign. Some really nice weather to start off this week, and we've got more of it to come. Now, it's a little windy for your Tuesday, which we'll talk more about coming up, but a very quiet evening overall across the region with no major issues here tonight. As we look at our Neal Street camera temperatures, we'll be down into the upper 30s by 11 o'clock. Again, overall, the week looks good. We will talk those winds when we come back. WCI 3 News starts right now. Now on WCIA 3 News. The company that owns the Savoy 16 has filed for bankruptcy. So what does that mean for the future of the movie theater? She was fired, then rehired. Why one longtime city employee is suing for harassment. Illinois was the first state and remains one of just a few states nationally able to test for COVID-19. And another test has come up positive. What you need to know about the four people who've contracted the coronavirus. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6. Times are tough, I guess. Some in Savoy are concerned for the future of their movie theater. This comes after the parent company filed for bankruptcy last week. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. And I'm Jennifer Roscoe. Goodrich Quality Theaters own Savoy 16, as well as theaters in four other states. The bankruptcy announcement got a lot of people talking about the future of the Savoy location. Today, we tried to get some answers. WCI 3's Courtney Bunting live outside the theater now. So, Courtney, what did you find out? Well, Jennifer, I called Goodrich twice today, and both times I was sent to voicemail. We also contacted them over the weekend, but they still haven't answered our questions. Now, many of you, after hearing this news of the bankruptcy filing, are asking what's next. Now, Goodrich owes $33 million to its creditors. The company is based in Michigan, but they have 30 locations across the U.S. I talked to some who were surprised to hear about the Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing. They say the theater here is busy almost every time they go. On the other hand, some say more people are watching movies at home because they say it's too expensive to go to the theater. You're paying between uh, 8 and $10 for a ticket. If you go into the uh, bigger theaters, the IMAX, you're going to pay more. Uh, you know, it's just, and then by the time you buy popcorn and everything, it's just even two of you, it's easy $50. I mean, a lot of people don't have money for that. I couldn't believe it. We go there quite a bit. Uh, we love going there and uh, probably going to go to a movie next week, in fact, so I hate to see it. It's important to remember they did file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. In general terms, that is based around reorganization. Court documents also show Goodrich still has between $50 million and $100 million in assets. I also talked to some businesses surrounding this Savoy 16, and they said they could also take a hit if this location does close. However, we haven't received any word that that might be happening at this point. Reporting live in Savoy, Courtney Bunting, WCIA 3, your local news leader. All right, Courtney, thank you so much. Now, as she mentioned, Goodrich has locations in five different states. Indiana, Missouri, Michigan, and Florida are the others. As of right now, none is closing. We have a follow-up from Danville. Today we talked with a woman who filed a lawsuit against the city claiming racial and age-related harassment. We first told you Friday, 51-year-old Lisa Robinson said she was denied access to files and important information because of her race and age. She says the harassment happened in several departments. Two years ago, the city tried to fire her. A union arbitrator ruled there were no grounds for that, and she got her job back. Robinson says the harassment stopped last year when her boss retired, but she still wants to see change. For years, I was the only black administrative assistant working for the city, and I had been treated differently for discriminatory reasons. I was unlawfully terminated and lawfully reinstated, and now I'm seeking justice. Her lawsuit asked for Danville to put procedures in place that would stop discrimination based on race. She also wants an independent monitor to oversee the policies. One person's dead after a camper fire last night. It happened at a campground in Petersburg, northwest of Springfield. The Menard County Sheriff's Office says the camper was consumed by flames and was told it may be occupied. It spread to nearby campers. One person was found dead. Their name has not been released. Here's an update now. A man in Westville could be facing up to 15 years in prison for an attempted bank robbery. Travis Pichon
Sean appeared in court today. He was arrested on Saturday, an hour after police responded to a robbery at a Chase Bank on University Avenue in Champaign. Police found him with a large amount of money and said he matched the person on surveillance video. He's now charged with felony theft. Using a counterfeit bill led to drug charges for a Chicago woman. 31-year-old Priscilla Martinez tried to use the bill marked for motion picture purposes at a Charleston convenience store. Police say they found pipes with suspected meth on them when they searched her car. Forgery charges could be added at a later date. New details to the governor's call to end the use of cash bail. He and supporters of ending it say it'll cut down on the number of people who don't need to be in jail. More leaders in law enforcement say the move would put Illinois in danger. WCI3's Gabrielle Franklin joins us live now. So Gabrielle, what, what's the latest response from these law enforcement officers? Well, Paul, we knew that sheriffs were strongly against this idea, but now sheriffs around the state are bringing in others from law enforcement so that they can oppose this move as a group. The Illinois Sheriff's Association announced a new group called COPS will be fighting all session long to try to stop this from becoming law. The group includes the Fraternal Order of Police, the Association of Chiefs of Police, and the Police Benevolent and Protective Association. The groups named themselves COPS, or the Coalition of Public Safety. Area sheriffs in the group fear that if money bonds are eliminated, people will skip court appearances and then go right back into the community. And that's why there's bond set. They've committed a crime. Uh, so there's bond set. It's, bo it's based on the severity of the crime. Uh, the the uh, danger, are they a danger to the society? So the judge will set bond. Uh, and that's what needs to be done. Sheriffs want lawmakers and the governor to look at a place like New York that have already eliminated cash bail as an example of how things could go wrong. Now, New York's cash bond elimination took effect back in January. It's been reported there that a woman whose bond was eliminated was released from prison and then got out and committed an alleged hate crime. Now, Illinois sheriffs say that they do not want anything like that to happen here in this state. Paul. Now, certainly some questions remain to be answered. Gabrielle, thanks. Well, the governor spoke about his desire to end the practice as a part of his plan for criminal justice reform in the state. He said his goal is to logically reduce the state's 40,000 inmate population. Illinois already has a reduced cash bond policy for low-level offenders after passing the Bail Reform Act in 2017. In other news, the city of Danville welcomed two new members to its police force this morning. Perform all the duties. Perform all the duties. And joined upon me. And joined upon me. As a probationary there was a swearing-in ceremony, as you heard there in the city council chambers. Mayor Ricky Williams made it official for those two probationary police officers. Williams says adding these two gives the police department more options. To help represent the city. Is that they're going to allow us their presence and ability to become on patrol. They'll allow us to reinstate those special units. Um, the, their individuals from the police force will have more time to build relationships with members of the community and also be proactive instead of reactive to any kind of violence or other issue that occurs in the city. With the two probationary officers, the Danville police staff is now at full force. There's another case of the coronavirus in the Illinois. Find out what we know about the person. Also tonight. We've got guys working their tail off. The Illini won their 20th game on Sunday. The coach and his staff were rewarded today. We've been rewarded with some nice weather to start off this week. 51 the high today. Yeah, well above what is considered normal and average for this time of the year. All right, we're going to come back, talk about the winds that are going to be returning for your Tuesday. The sunshine, above average temperatures in the forecast coming up.